Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. I recently had the golden opportunity to interview Brent Smith. And during that interview, I asked him which one song someone new to Shine Down should start with. His answer was Sound of Madness, which I had yet to hear. So as a budding Shine Down fan, I knew that I had to add that to my list right away. Let's get to it. Okay, five, five, five fifty it is. But I just want you to know that this is wrong, Tony. And it wasn't so long ago that. What? Hello, Tony. Tony. Oh man, yeah, there's like, there's some grindy, uh, ah, sounds happening. There are lots of ah sounds, lots of, uh, lots of the ah vowel bright wide, uh, lots of rhyming in there. It just brings it very far forward into the face a ton. Uh, interesting. Okay. We're going to go back to the beginning. I'm not really sure what this beginning has to do with the overall thing. I know that this, these lyrics uh, have some association with uh, drama queens, and it sounds like maybe there's a dramatic situation happening on the phone. I think that might be how it's applying here. But I was really intrigued by listening to the foley or the background noise in the beginning. And at first I thought it was just white noise, but then I heard some whooshing, and it sounds like maybe it's some wind or uh, like more uh, ambiance in the sound from around this telephone booth. And then there's a moment where it cuts and it's silent right before the music comes in. But it's like the split second is very effective. Right? Okay. I think that's wind. Five. Five. 5.50 it is. But I just want you to know Saturday. that this is wrong, Tony. And it wasn't so long ago that... What? Hello? Tony? Tony? Yeah, definitely wind. Okay, so there is just a split second of silence between those two things. That clears our ears all of a sudden. Uh, I like that choice in the mix a lot. Man, I, so I think his vocal sounds like it's doubled and one of them has even extra distortion on it, like a, uh, like a little more rasp in the sound. I really like the way his vocal's produced. It's very gnarly, very in your face while not losing depth. That's good. Also very interesting that he's clapping at the beginning. You see that? But I'm not actually sure I'm hearing a clap sound. I hear a kick really clearly in the drums. Oh, maybe there's a clap that's mixed in. It's just much more of a kick that I hear. Yeah, I get it, you're an outcast. Always under attack, always coming in last. Bring it up the fast, no one owes you anything. You need a shotgun blast, a kick in the ass, so paranoid. Watch your back! And this vowel that I was talking about early, earlier, the reason it ha feels like it just smacks you in the face so early is because of the way he's rhyming a lot of the words and leaning into an ah sound. An outcast, always under attack, always coming in last, right? pass. It, it keeps coming back to this ah in the rhyme scheme. And he doesn't like just lightly lean into that. He really fully leans into it. So that means that the tip of his tongue is resting against the bottom teeth and the back of it tends to be very high. Ah, right? Sometimes when people 
are talking, they're not going to have such a fully accentuated ah vowel the way that he does here. Um, they'll have less height in the tongue, which will cause the sound to not just bounce forward so quickly. It's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of ah. I liked the fullness of the sound when I heard that little bit of chorus there. I think that we switched it to. Um, but he also, he popped up an octave here. So if you listen, it's, yeah, you it's down lower and then it's one octave higher. Yeah, um, an octave is essentially where you have the same note name, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. By the way, there's no H in a musical scale. Um, so a J7 though, that is... That possibly exists in a, a in a fantasy world and is probably extremely groundbreaking, literally. Uh, but uh, it, usually the musical alphabet stops after G. And when you have a note that's called an A and another note that's called an A, often if it's not like a uh, number A5, maybe they're both A5, that'd be unison. But if you have it split by one, so A4 and A5, that's an octave apart. A3 and A5 are two octaves apart. And then if they're same, right, that's unison. So he jumped up one octave higher. That's a pretty big jump. Um, the A lot of voices, you don't need to have a huge, massive range to be a good singer. You can be very expressive within about an octave and a half of range. But a lot of professional singers have a bigger range than that so that they maximize how many notes they can be expressive on. I just wanted to point out, though, that he jumped up a full octave just in the verse, just, you know, in the first minute of the song. I just love the rhyming in these lyrics. This one's really leaning on the E vowels. Again, a very far forward vowel, very bright, more in the face. It's really cool. It's like got a certain rap feeling to it. I really like these lyrics. I'm, I'm taken by them. At first it was the rhyme scheme and the way that they just coming kept coming back to a certain sound that was bright and in the face it felt uh, like very aggressive in the sound and the rhyme scheme in particular. But when we got to the actual chorus, I feel like the lyrics have a lot of meaning and depth in them. I created the sound of madness with the book on pain. Somehow I'm still here to explain. I guess I just, I really relate to this because I've had that history of depression uh, and it's 
It's an awful place to be. And I love that after that, it says that the darkest hour never comes in the night. You can sleep with a gun when you're going to wake up and fight. I think it's so important for a person in that situation to really um, get support, first of all. Um, find your support, put together a support team. It's really hard to do when you're there, but support is key to helping you get out of that. But then the individual has to fight for it. You have to fight and get out and you have to fight for yourself. And it's so interesting to me that um, it's talking about like the, I feel like my interpretation of this is um, that sometimes fighting for yourself is actually the most difficult thing to do. Um, you can languish in the darkness and that sucks. That space sucks so much. But fighting for yourself, that takes so much energy and guts and daring and willing to be hurt more. But if you do it, you can get out of that dark spot. Anyhow, uh, I guess I just really connect to this. I connect to this majorly. Um, I want to go back and listen to that chorus again. I think it's so interesting that they have for yourself spaced out at the end. So maybe it's also the idea that somebody can, when you're going to wake up and fight, that they could be fighting for someone else as well. Sometimes that can help you get out of that spot. Man, I bet that there are tons of different interpretations of this, which is one of the marks of really great lyrics in a song. But they just, they really, they hit home for me. I greatly, greatly appreciate this. And after talking with Brent also about his struggles and how he's sober now and really into health and to being dangerous because he's sober, right? embracing life and saying, I'm going to be at my max so that I can have this wide effect and be my best person. It was so inspirational to talk with him. And it it's very exciting that I feel like uh, he has taken these lyrics and made them a part of his life. Oh, really, really cool. Okay. I confess I was not watching the video enough to know what was happening. I saw one week earlier happen. I remember that it said Saturday at the beginning. Oh my goodness. I was just so absorbed in the lyrics that I didn't watch the theme in the video enough and I feel really bad. So let me know in the comments what the storyline of the video is. Uh, <laughs> I was just super absorbed in it at that moment. Also listening to the way that he is delivering this verse. Most of it is on two notes and they're like a third apart. It's not very far apart, but he's giving so much emphasis to that the vowels again in your face, really moving his mouth a lot, but also channeling so much energy through the consonants. It is aggressive and it never lets up. It is always there and always present. He's got a great sound. You think that I cry to me, you looking so sorry that I'm gonna believe you've been affected by social disease. Well then take your medicine. I created the sound of madness, hope of hook on pain. Somehow I'm still here to explain that the darkest hour never comes in the night. You can sleep with the gun when you gotta wake up and fight. 
I think that he does such an incredible job of demonstrating how to divide a diphthong into two different notes um, or not. Remember, a diphthong is when you take two vowel sounds and you combine them into one sound. That's when you're speaking. When you're singing, you have to determine where you're going to be placing those vowels. Do you want them, the first one to be longer, or the second one to be longer? Do you want them to be equal? Um, do you want it to sound like it's one sound or do you want it to actually fall on different pitches? And he does a few, he does a couple times where he's on different pitches and one time where he just goes through and keeps it as one sound. <laughs> Sound. He goes, sound is a diphthong, ow, right, ow. And he takes the first vowel on the top note and the second vowel on the, lo the lower note there. Take your medicine. I created the sound of madness. He does blur the line a little bit between those, actually. It lingers a little more on the first vowel. I shades the sound. And explain a so a he does a on the top one and then I think he does e on the run. Yeah, dividing a diphthong like that can actually really help with uh, clearly emphasizing different fast pitches. Very very helpful if you have fast runs. And night is actually a diphthong as well, but he makes it into one more solid sound that's a little tilted towards British. So he lingers on the first open vowel. So instead of going night, he sings night, which goes towards the ah essentially at the beginning and very, very lightly touches on it. He almost leaves it off. Same, oh, there's that for yourself there. Um, same thing on fight. He's holding fa. It's he's holding an ah vowel, even though it's a diphthong that goes fight. Beautiful transition. It's like it's hanging out on a dissonant note and it just lingers there and uh, is held as the rest of the music fades away and then he comes in mostly very uh, with very sparingly few instruments underneath. Uh, the tension that's held by that note where it doesn't resolve is um, it grips me and allows for his voice to come in and start speaking to me without losing my attention in any place. I created the sound of madness, wrote the book on pain. Somehow I'm still here to explain that the darkest hour never comes in the night. <laughs> There's so much rasp on his voice there. I like the way he switched up the melody. Um, but also, I think in the music video, you have a lot of graininess that I'm seeing come through in it. And I feel like that matches this grainy raspiness of his voice here. It, the two blend together. It's like, it's just so complimentary. <laughs> Somehow 
I'm still here to explain That the darkest hour never comes in the night You can sleep with the Ooh. gun When you're gonna wake up When you're gonna wake up And fall cre- Oh Oh That was a really good holding out of fight there and when he layered the vocal as well, that was very, very satisfying. I don't know what Sunday has to do with that. Again, man, I'm just not following the storyline enough. Now I'm still here to explain That the darkest hour never comes in the night You can sleep with the gun when you gonna wake up Do that one more time. I love the pent up energy and fight there. When you gonna wake up? When you gonna wake up? And I created the sound of madness, wrote the book on pain. Somehow I'm still here to explain that the darkest hour never comes in the night. You can sleep with the god when you got to I just, I don't know what the storyline is, but this image of these people hugging, um, and it sounds like a very climactic moment in the song as well, where we've essentially had a bridge and then we've gone back into the chorus. So this is the big moment. Uh, there's emotional release just from watching these people hug. I don't know everything that's happened again, but the imagery is, it's just very touchy. It's really wonderful. The darkest hour never comes in the night You can sleep with the god When you gotta wake up and fly oh, dissonance in fight and the way he holds it out it's like a guttural uh it's not actually a guttural but it ha- involves some gutturalness but it's like it's from the guts it's like torn from him I feel like maybe this is about missing persons. I'm not sure. Maybe they found each other and, and they had to fight to find each other. I'm not sure. Oh. I also, I just love the way he does fight. Of course, I've talked about it a few times now. But I'm so happy that they're repeating it. It's like, yes, that's a really good stuff. Oh yeah, they did it again. Perfect. <laughs> Is it strange that I feel inspired by this song? It's it's so aggressive, right? And you can hear madness in it. But I feel inspired by the lyrics. Yeah, I feel inspired to really continue to fight the good fight and reach people, make that impact. I hope that a lot of you feel the same way when you listen to this song. Because I think it's pretty brilliant. By the way, Shine Down just released another album. It's called Planet Zero. It's definitely worth checking out. And if you would like to see that interview with Brent, oh man, that was inspirational. You can check it out over here. I hope that you fall more in love with music every day.